to know. Um, with the release of the transcripts related to Adam Schiff's Russia probe this week, uh, do you have, is there any information you can share with us as to what the DOJ has shared with the White House on whether it is investigating Obama uh, administration officials on this matter? So I don't have any updates on that from because that's currently a DOJ matter. Um, but you did refer to transcripts, and I do think it's an important moment um, to talk about what was in some of the transcripts that were released prior to today, so not the specific ones that you're asking about. But we learned from newly released transcripts a few things. We learned that what some Obama officials were saying publicly was much different than what they were saying privately. Uh, James Clapper was out there saying that um, he had evidence that this was worse than Watergate, um, when, in fact, a few weeks later, he was saying privately, I never saw any direct empirical evidence that the Trump campaign or someone in it was plotting or conspiring with Russia. Samantha Power said, I am not in possession of anything. I am not in possession and didn't read or absorb any information that came out of the intelligence community suggesting collusion. Ambassador Rice, I don't recall intelligence or evidence to that effect. Former Attorney General Loretta Lynch, I can't say that it, if it existed or not. I don't recall that being briefed up to me. So it brings the question, it brings the question to light. Why then did we have many years of investigating collusion that these Obama administration officials never existed, they never saw any evidence of, but for three years the American people were dragged through the mud and told that their choice for the President of the United States might have been a Russian asset based on no evidence of all at all. Uh, this President was exonerated by the Mueller report, um, and there are some real questions for these individuals who are saying one thing, pu thing publicly and another thing privately. Thank you so much. I think I got to all of you, and we'll be back soon. Hello, everyone. I want to highlight three critical aspects of President Trump's response to the coronavirus that have exceeded the media's expectations and should inspire confidence in every American across this country. Rest assured, the Trump administration is working tirelessly to defeat the invisible enemy. First, contrary to some media pronouncements, the United States um, did not need the one million ventilators thus far that the media said we were in dire need of. In fact, it's encouraging to be able to say that every single American who has needed a ventilator has received a ventilator. Um, and this administration has managed uh, to procure, excuse me, 100,000 ventilators to be man manufactured in 100 days. That's extraordinary. That's three times the amount produced in the average year. Um, likewise, there was some concern about N95 respirators, but the Trump administration has now shipped over 90 million N95 respirators. Once again, that is more than three times the average healthcare industry consumption of N95 respirators, respirators in the typical year. Um, finally, the U.S. now leads the world in testing. For weeks, the media cited South Korea as being the gold standard for testing, but as it stands, um, we are now testing at a higher rate per capita than South Korea. And in fact, as this chart is going to show you, in all 50 states, we are now testing at a higher rate per capita than South Korea. So a state in this country is testing at a higher rate per capita than the entire country of South Korea. That's pretty extraordinary, I would say.